Let us pray. God, open our ears to hear your word. Open our hearts to receive your word. Open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world around us. And open our lives to the infinite possibilities born of your love. Amen. It took a crisis to bring us together. It took a crisis to bring us to prayer. Those sentiments were being shared rather widely over these last couple of weeks as literally hundreds of clergy around the Memphis area responded to a call to come together for prayer. Literally hundreds. We came together male and female, black and white, from tiny churches and mega churches and everything in between, from mainline Protestant denominations to non-denominational churches, literally hundreds of us heeded a call to come together for prayer for two weeks now, we got one more coming up. But it took a crisis to get us all to do that. We did a lot of praying. We prayed for everyone who has been affected by violence in this country and abroad in these last number of weeks and months. We prayed for law enforcement and for military personnel. We prayed for first responders. We prayed for families. We prayed for people who feel lost and people who feel that they have no reason to continue to have hope. We prayed. And then we prayed for the church, for all of the churches that we represented as we all came together, but for the church as a whole. And we asked God's forgiveness for all of the times that the church has failed God's people by failing to show love and mercy to everyone who has come into our doors. We prayed, and we prayed some more. And since most of us really didn't know a whole lot of people there, we were busy walking around introducing ourselves to one another and making those connections. And as we did that, we were all wondering why it was, particularly in a place like Memphis, Tennessee, that it had come to this before we had ever thought we should break down all those barriers and all those walls and come together to pray and ask God's help and acknowledge our need for God and for one another. It took a crisis to bring us all into that place. Now, if we were looking at scripture and looking for the example of what we should do when we are in need of renewal and strength and preparing ourselves for the work that God has given us, we really don't need to look very far because all of our gospels, particularly Luke's gospel, talk about the times that Jesus 
needed to go to God in prayer to be able to continue the journey. There were some specific points in his ministry where Jesus knew this is the time that I need to go and I need that strength that can only come from that communication with God. After his baptism, as he was choosing the twelve, as the Pharisees were besieging him, as people were coming in throngs seeking his healing, he knew that to do the work that God had called him to do required lots and lots of prayer. Yet sometimes I think we forget that and we think that we can handle all kinds of things on our own and without the strength that comes from that intimate relationship with God. The disciples obviously have observed that Jesus steps away and prays, and they ask him, teach us how to pray. Notice the things that Jesus tells them. Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. We're going to spend a lot of time on that one. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins because we ourselves need to forgive all those folks who are indebted to us. That's hard sometimes, isn't it? That's hard sometimes. And so Jesus has set this marvelous model for the disciples to understand what it means to go to God in prayer and in intimacy of relationship. And he adds one thing to that. You need to be persistent, he says. God doesn't need us to be persistent. We need ourselves to be persistent. Because that is how we go about building that intimacy of relationship with God. But I want to spend some time this morning talking about that whole notion of your kingdom come. To utter those words in the first century Roman Empire world is to actually say something that's fairly subversive. There's only one kingdom, and that's the kingdom of the empire, there's only one king, and that's Caesar, and to suggest that something else is far bigger and more important, those are dangerous words to utter in Jesus' time. And yet, this is where he begins his petitions. Your kingdom come, not this one, not this one in which we are surrounded by poverty and destruction and death and violence. No, not this kingdom, but your kingdom, God. Your kingdom where the impoverished and the marginalized know your mercy and your love and your justice. Your kingdom, God, your kingdom come. We hear that, and it almost sounds a bit passive to us, that one of these days we'll just be walking along and God's kingdom will fall on our heads. But there's more, so much more to understanding what Jesus is telling the disciples. It's more than a passive waiting. It's an engagement with God. It's an intimacy of relationship that helps us understand as people of God that God's kingdom coming comes through us, through the work of our hands, through the love of our hearts. That is how 
God's kingdom comes. And it is only when we are fortified and strengthened through prayer that we understand how God can use us to allow God's kingdom to come forth. Mother Teresa once said that she stopped believing that prayer changes things. She stopped believing that when she reached a point of understanding that prayer changes us and that we in turn change things. Those words resonated with me the very first time I ever heard them. And I think as I have matured and matured in my own faith, those words resonate with me even more. Because those words remind us that we have a role that we are not just passively watching as the world goes by, but that we have a role, a very real role to play in helping everyone understand God's love and mercy. If we are not the ambassadors of that, if we don't radiate that in all that we do, then there is no hope. That is the day that there is no hope. It has taken a crisis for all of us to understand our need for God and our need for one another and our need to be in constant and persistent prayer. But already, already, we see the fruits of that prayer. In Dallas, Texas, two groups of people whose skin happened to be different colors found themselves on a street facing one another. And rather than having a bitter, angry confrontation, they chose to do something else. They chose to cross that street. They chose to come together. They chose to be in conversation they chose to pray. They chose to love. In Wichita, Kansas, concerned citizens and law enforcement made a decision that rather than there be some kind of protest Instead, they would come together to throw a community barbecue. And they would sing together and laugh together and share their concerns with one another civilly and in love to try to break down those walls. And here, here in Memphis, Tennessee, hundreds of clergy decided it was way past time, a good 50 years probably past time, for us to come together 
and to show our need for God and each other and to pray. To pray for God's kingdom to come requires something of us. It requires us to be willing to be in that intimate and vulnerable relationship with God where we can learn how God can use us. And so in these days to come, that is my prayer. My prayer is that we will be open to the workings of the Holy Spirit as we have never been open to the workings of the Holy Spirit before. And that we will be willing to allow God to help us break down those walls and barriers and be united together in God's love. Your kingdom come, O Lord. Help me make that day. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.